Good evening. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> welcome. Nice and, s- nice and s- welcome. Please place your bags in the overhead bin. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is a late night recording of the latest BS, another episode for our queens and some kings. There could be some kings out there. There could be some kings. There's maybe, there's like one or two, but we, it's, we, write, we appreciate it. We appreciate them. Um, I feel like some of our kings, I can't tell if they hate us or they love us, you know? Right. It's like, I do. Right. It's, it's like, like me? Are, 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 is it be, are you backhanded? Are you being backhanded? Are you being That's what I'm saying. I'm like, are you being sarcastic? Like, are you, I feel like uh, uh, sometimes it gets to the point where I'm like, are you mocking me? <laughs> like, like, genuinely, are you mocking me? Yeah. Is that, that's what I just want to And know. it's like, and I don't want to sound crazy. So I don't right. want to like try to call them out. There's actually a guy who watched, he watches both of my channels, both of my um, TikToks, sorry. And I always notice him commenting on my second account. And he would always comment stuff that was like borderline hateful. And sometimes mm. he was nice, but sometimes I was like, are you picking on me? It just felt like he was just like picking on me. Um, right. And so one time I commented back and I was like, his name's Pete. I was like, Pete, I can't tell if you hate me or not. Can you just come out with it? Like, can you, can you just... Come on, Pete. He's like, he's like, no, I love your content. Like, I'm sorry it came off that way. You know, I just, like, type how it comes off in my brain or whatever. And then um, a few months later, he commented on a video and was like, I don't know why, but he told me that I had blocked him on my main account because he said something about when I got locked out of the TV station, which was like one of my first weeks ever at NBC 12 in Richmond, I got locked out on the roof because I went to take a freaking picture of the sunrise and the door. mm -hmm, And I put something in the door to like, not because it locked automatically. And when they took me up there, they're like, Hey, this is a great photo op, but you will get locked out. So put something. And I did. And it locked. And thank God I had my IFB on, which is like my little earpiece and my microphone. So the show started at 6 a.m. And I went up there at like 5.50. And I start to hear the mic checks at like 5.55. I also had my phone with me, but I was so new that I didn't have anyone's numbers at all. Oh, no. I hear the producer going, mic check, Sophia, Sophia, we don't have you. And I was like, Maurice, Maurice, I'm on the roof. Maurice, come get me. He's like, what? You're on the roof? I was like, yes, please come get me. (laughs) Help me. I'm on the roof. Please help. (laughs) He ran up those stairs. Shout out Maurice. He was always a real one. Um, But yeah, apparently this guy like made fun of me or said something backhanded about it. So I blocked him. And... That was, you know, like three years ago now at this point. So he'd been riding it out just on my second account. And then right. the other day, I posted that I was getting laser hair removal and it was in my armpit. So I just showed like a little clip and you could see my bra. And I was just wearing like a nude bra. And he commented beige question mark. Come on. Uh, I'm sorry. Not the I feel like I feel like that's like a government name for a color. Like you couldn't have just said what? tan. <laughs> You had to say nude. beige. <laughs> nude. Nude. Beige? All right, yeah. brother. And why do you get a say on what kind of what kind of bra I wear? What kind of undergarments that I have on? Excuse right. me. Right. And so I, at first I didn't get it. Like, I honestly didn't get it because I was like, beige? I never mentioned beige in this thing. And so I just right. responded, huh? Like, I, I love to do a huh <laughs> when people, <laughs> when people are just like, sound a little ridiculous. And then the next day I look on the comments and there were a couple people, a couple of ladies responding, being like, what color bra do you wear, Pete? Oh, why do you think you have a say? And I was like, oh, my gosh, that little creep was talking about my bra. My bra's ear. Mm -hmm. And so I blocked him. I had to block him. I'm so sorry. And then he messaged me on Instagram and was like, bro, I'm I'm sorry for like whatever I did to get blocked. Like, I genuinely enjoyed your content, this, that and the other. I'm like. Do you though? <laughs> yeah, but like, honestly, like I really feel like you're mocking me. Like there's yes! this one guy, there is this one dude that comments on every one of my videos and I swear he's mocking me. And I genuinely just want to like comment and be like, "Do you are you just like commenting to mock me?" Like I'm like genuinely curious. I I you know, I just look at the comments and I'm like I don't know. 
it just I, what is it like about anything that you do like your appearance your personality so, like so okay so for instance this morning i posted a um <laughs> a, a, knowing him he's probably gonna listen to this probably i have no idea so it's okay pete's probably listening to this <laughs> <it's> a, <laughs> pete <laughs> if you didn't comment about her bra we wouldn't be in this situation but, I love the support, but there is a line. But there's a but there's boundaries, babe. Boundaries. Anyway, um, if you were like, look at this tan bra, and he was like, it's beige. That's that's different. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, so I it was this morning. I posted a video of me attempting to do like, okay, so there I'm like kind of in between hair wash day, right? Tomorrow is when I wash my hair. So today it was, it, it would have been fine if it was down, but at work today, I had to do a lot of heavy lifting. And when I do that, <clears throat> I sweat and like at the back of my neck gets sweaty. So like my hair, I could feel my hair. It just gets in the way. It's frustrating, but I didn't feel like wearing it in a ponytail. Spoiler alert. It's in a ponytail, but, um, <laughs> it's fine. So anyway, I went on TikTok and I looked up like half up, half down tutorials like hair like cute hair ideas right but all of them had like every one that i watched had like the two tiny strands of hair that go right here in your face and mm. don't get me wrong if i'm not working and i'm just going out of the night on the town you bet your sweet bippy i'm gonna wear my hair like that because i love the little fate like the little two pieces in the front i think that's adorable but when i'm working and i'm bending down and lifting boxes and the hair gets in my face i'm constantly doing this and then I just put it behind my ears and so I was like anyway so I was hoping to find I know I just went on a long tangent but I was hoping to find a hair tutorial <laughs> that didn't have the two pieces of strands in your face anyway yeah found this one thought it was so cute and I was like oh I don't have to use any bobby pins I don't have to use any claw clips just the hair tie I was like that's my kind of hair tutorial love it so I do it and I look at it from the front and I was like, wow, like that actually looks really, really good. I looked at it from the back and I was like, okay, love that. Looked at it from the side. <laughs> and I was like, I posted on TikTok and somebody said Pomeranian tail. <gasps> somebody said horse tail. And I'm not even, I'm not even mad about it because they are 100% correct. Like I'm not mad about it because I'm Wait, like, yeah, what got was me there. the what was the it was like style? okay so like so okay so you do a slick back moment okay i don't want my mic to fall you do a slick back moment and then you put you tie it off in a little hair tie and then you feed it through underneath and then you pull it tight and then it's like uh it, it almost gives the illusion that you have a claw clip in yeah in a way so i did that but i don't know the way that i had it in it was just like but it, like it wasn't it wasn't like full and luscious it was just like a right so i was so every hair tutorial that i saw there was a view from the front and then there was maybe a couple views from the back so i made a video and i was like next time that i see a hair tutorial i want the first failed attempt the fifth failed attempt i said i want to see you smacking yourself in the head with the hairbrush because it's not working i want to see I want to see freaking, um, what do I want to see? Like, I want to see everything. I want to see your arms hurting because yeah. that's what I go through. That's what oh, I go sweating. through. sweating. Yeah. Literally sweating, contemplating, like, almost on the verge of tears. That's what I want to see. So I made a video talking about that. And the guy commented, he goes, oh, geez, typical Tuesday. So I'm like, and then, like, other videos <laughs> I'll post it. He'll go, he'll go, OMG slay. I'm like, you're mocking me. I'm like, you are totally and utterly mocking me. Or like, pick a side. He'll play devil's advocate sometimes. I'm like, why are you that pressed about it? You know what I mean? Like, I'm just making a general comment. I'm not asking for, you know, I'm not asking for you to be like, oh, what do you think? Would you do a different side? Blah, blah, blah. Like, it's just little comments that just kind of get under my skin. But I can't. But he's not being outright hateful. So I have no reason to block him. I'm just so I'm just kind of sitting here like he could be actually genuinely like, oh, Slay, love that for you. Or he's like, uh -huh, Slay Queen, you know what I mean? But like yeah. in a sarcastic, in a sarcastic way, I genuinely cannot yeah. tell. 
it's just like you got to pick a side. Don't right. if you're going to be a hater, be all hater 100% of the time so I can just block you quick. If yep. you're going to love me, then like let's keep it all good. You know, like yes. I I don't want to have to question your comments like mm. right. Yeah. No. Like uh, my favorites is just like, you know, when people have like actual construct cuz cuz whether we like it or not, texts can get misconstrued. So comments can get misconstrued. So I love when people say like, I mean this with all the love in the world or no hate. I just want to let you know. That's when I'm like, okay, they're coming from a place of, they're coming from a place of peace and not like ready to square, you know, right? Ready to square up. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's, I just can't tell if this dude is actually like genuinely interested in my content, but, or he's just mocking me. So it's always hard. I'm about to get up and close the store real quick. Um, but I think I the other day I had some thought that I was like, I don't feel like anyone genuinely goes on their TikTok and starts a video with, hey guys, I just wanted to hop on here. I feel like that's just a like you're either you're trying to sell me something or you're right. like joking or the um because it made me think about like when people comment i love you but i'm like no nah. don't do that it's like you're beautiful but yeah, don't literally don't uh, do that no, no, just, just, just shut just... it don't <laughs> that's just... like a it's you're oh i hate that um or when people start the videos with um oh my gosh, I look so bad right now, or please don't mind, I look so terrible right now, I just got out of bed, like, it's okay, you don't even have Been to there. say that. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> I've definitely done that one I'm time. like, <laughs> no, but I, I have, like, I, I definitely have kind of, like, you know, in my head, I'm thinking, I'm like, why would I point that out, you know what I mean, because, like, what if, like, what right. if they didn't even, know, like, what if they didn't even notice it, but it's, like, the one, that, it's, like, oh, so sorry, pardon the one little wrinkle on my face, it's, like, what, and they're like squinting and I'm like, oh, like the one tiny one that's like right here. You don't see that. You don't notice it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I get it. It's also in like we don't have to excuse that. Like we don't look right. TV ready all the freaking time. Camera ready all the time. I, I just feel like it's a easy way to start trying to kind of like cut out those negative thoughts about yourself. Like I try to never, ever say on any TikTok video, it's like, I hate the way I look right now. Or like, I right. can't stand this makeup or I look so ugly. I feel so hideous. I don't even want to put that out in the universe permanently because I know everything I put out there is on there. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just, I try not to say anything along those lines because I also wouldn't want any of my followers saying that about themselves. So yeah. I started to, I don't, I don't know if I started to, but I just like had that thought one day. I was like, oh, I'm never going to do that. Also, do you know, have you seen Kensington on um, TikTok? She does makeup. Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> she I'm better with, a I'm video. Better with face. I'm better. I'm better with faces. So maybe if I saw you probably face. she's absolutely drop dead gorgeous. Um, but she recorded a video the other day and was, I guess, going to get coffee. And she was like, sorry, I look like trash. I just rolled out of bed. And she had a glowing tan beautiful freckles like perfectly curled eyelashes wavy she, was, hair was she in the car and she was like yeah I literally just rolled out of bed i'm like yes i wish i would like, you really like I, you know what i mean i'm like i wake up my hair is like greasy so it's like stuck to the side of my face yes <laughs> like, <laughs> to have gone in and so yeah, a bunch of people stitched it mm -hmm. yep yep Yep. And they were like, but did you actually just like roll out of bed? But everyone's right. roll out of bed quote is different. So right. don't, don't, don't say like, oh, I look, uh, this is considered ugly to me because to everyone else, like you look beautiful, you know, like don't, right. you don't have to do all that girl. You know, right. you don't, like, I shouldn't relax. say, you know, you don't look ugly because some people do actually have issues with like their body dysmorphia and all that kind of stuff. But just trust you look gorgeous. Right. Trust. Just trust, trust, trust. Yeah. That's yeah. nuts. Um, so should we do a little life update? A little, maybe update like a catch speed? up. Yeah, sure. How have you been? I know you've been like super tired, but 
you have a better <laughs> schedule now with your new job, right? I do. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty busy. Yeah. So like that's the beauty about this position is that I was craving stability and I was craving a schedule. I was, you know, I wanted um what's the word I'm looking for? I wanted um structure. I know it's mm. literally an S. I wanted I was craving structure and this job is giving me structure. Like I have because if it was up to me and I had a choice, I just know myself and yeah. I would be and if it was either sit on the couch and rot or you gotta go to work. I gotta go to work. You know what I mean? So it's mm-hmm. like, it's getting me up early in the morning. So like, and I love the fact that when I get home, like I'm actually tired at the end of the day. Like that's, that's awesome. Like, so what I, so, you know, I mean, normally when I say like, oh yeah, like I'm tired, it's really, I'm like mentally tired, but with this job, I'm mentally and physically tired. So then it takes me no time to fall asleep at night, which is so nice. Um, but yeah, you yeah, go to bed I, early. I do go to bed early. Yeah. It li- if we weren't recording, what time is it? Who? It's nine oh two. It's my bedtime. Literally, as soon as we finish recording, I'm going to bed. Like I'm going to sleep. <laughs> like it's like that. I mean, granted, but I'm up at like six a.m. Getting myself together, packing my lunch, making my coffee, get myself ready to go, get my work stuff ready, and then like heading the- like hitting the road kind of vibe so yeah so it's it's definitely very it's very rewarding it's it's everything that i've been looking for sorry literally everyone is (laughs) on my freaking phone right now all of a sudden everyone wants to text me so that's literally that's fine i Um, just i literally same i just got like I got a missed call, three texts, and an Instagram. I'm like, dude. <laughs> I'm like, phone's been dry yeah. all day. I'm like, bam. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, what? Okay. Wait. So you said you've been packing your lunch. What do you? What do you usually pack? Because I remember when you were doing the sales side of things, you had an issue. You were saying with like going to eat out all the time, and you were like, yeah, I girl. should be. I should be grocerying. Literally, because with my old job, they gave me an expense account. So I could go mm. and I could just swipe the company card and get myself a nice, a nice little Sammy or a nice little salad. Like that was no issue. But now I don't get an expense report or expense account. Oh. So for the first couple of, you know, for the first couple of days, I would be going and swiping at Kava or swiping at an account or, you know, just like going to Chick-fil-A and everything. And I'm like, it's, it's racking up. I'm like, geez it's only been like a week or two and my bills are racking up right now that's nuts so i've been i was like i need to go to the grocery store i need to i need to pack a lunch i need to do all that so what i usually get is i get these you know those like pre-made salad bags like salad kits i get those i live off of those i love them they're fantastic i get them at aldi and trader joe's and sometimes kroger so freaking good and so simple but I've realized now the more that I've been kind of, you know, with this job, I am a very like, I need to just pack a bunch of like smaller sides kind of thing. Something that like I can just like grab and snack on when I'm driving down the road kind of thing. Because there are some days where I can stop and like actually, you know, eat a nice little salad or something like that because I bought this like super cute big like Tupperware looking container and it has a little compartment on top where you can put your salad dressing with a lid and a bunch of your sides and then the lettuce underneath so then when it's time for your salad you take the lid off and you just bloop and you just dump all the stuff in there and then you pour your dressing on it shake it up and it comes with a little fork that attaches to the lid on top of your salad coolest freaking thing right so I did that, but then I'm so, like, I barely have time to stop. I'm like, I can't drive, look at the GPS, build my freaking DIY salad in the car, <laughs> shake it up and crunch on it when I'm driving down the road. It's not safe. So I'm like, I need something that I can just grab and eat. So I'm sticking to, like, very elementary school-esque kind of lunch, like a cheese stick, some apple slices, some crackers a sandwich that's easy for me to like uh, not like a 
salad where every I mean a sandwich where everything's fallen off like an easy simple like ham and cheese sandwich kind of vibe so things that are easy for me to eat from one stop to another so I went to Costco and I bought that jumbo bag of those baby bell cheeses yum they're so good so I pack that I pack like carrot slices apple slices um what else like um those white cheddar cheeto puff things Mm. and a nice little ham and cheese sandwich and then a LaCroix it's phenomenal that's awesome it's look so at good. you i know i've been forgetting to pack my lunch for the past few days so my mom te- my mom told me tonight she goes Brittany, pack your lunch tomorrow i was like i know <laughs> <laughs> yes ma'am <laughs> well that's awesome i'm happy for you thanks what have you been up to oh you know um still doing the med spa social media so that's amazing really fun I act, so I go every Wednesday is like my day to go and film and I'll be there for like five, six hours typically. And then throughout the week, I just kind of sprinkle posts throughout the Instagram. So actually, I did a video um, the other day on my main TikTok and I was just kind of talking about what my job there requires like what I do as their social media manager and this woman commented and she was like wow this actually seems like a lot of work when you first mentioned it I just thought that's totally not a real job but now that you get in the details it's a lot I'm like oh <laughs> thank you thank you question mark <laughs> all right like a, the, the backhanded compliment thank you um yeah i mean it's not the hardest job on the planet but it takes someone who actually enjoys doing social media to do it so oh, that's sure. why not everyone would be maybe suited for the job but i love taking videos and editing and being creative in that way so it's been really fun to kind of channel that towards like the beauty and aesthetic industry um you know and i love a little lip filler love a little botox so like everything that we do there is right up my alley and it's something i'm interested in um so i'm doing that tomorrow i also since we talked got my wisdom teeth out finally finally did it yes and it for you some of the darkest times of my life i will say i I can't i was (laughs) was, you're gonna have to do it one day girl um (laughs) I realized how much I love food. By day four, I was, like, losing the will to live. Like, (laughs) I I was staying at Chris's house, and every morning he'd be like, do you want want something to eat? I'm like, no, just let me die here. Like, I just didn't even want – I didn't want another mashed potato. Like, I didn't want another bowl of rice aroni. It was so – it was so boring so like that that's so sad i know i realized like how many food like i just i made actually a whole entire list of all the stuff i was going to eat afterwards because i was like that deep in the trenches Mm. that's so Um, funny the only thing i wish is like i would have just done it sooner like it it wasn't the healing wasn't bad it's more so just the limited diet um and i had no pain at all and i even got stitches on the bottom too because they were like super impacted Mm -hmm. which i don't even know what impacted means but apparently they were really badly impacted um and the one on my left side was like coming down touching the nerve that like runs along my jawline and the first people I went to just to get like a little, um, I don't know, like checkup, like just to get x-rays and stuff and talk about a treatment plan. Yes. They were like, yeah, you might have a permanent to temporary nerve damage on the left side of your face, like oh, on your, uh huh, like on your bottom lip. Like if you're putting on lip liner, she's like in the corner, you know, you probably won't be able to feel anything. Um, and it, it could be temporary, but it also could last a little longer. I was like, Oh, well, let me just book right now. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> What's um, <it> play? <laughs> right, <Whoa. right. laughs> so I didn't have any of that. Thank God. Um, and yeah, I, I took my pain medicine for the first three days. I was good. The, by day nine, I was like eating everything normally. And now it's like it never happened. Like I'm just back to. Oh, that's good. 
Oh, yeah, I'm back to 100%. So it was like a solid week of just being – and when you're not eating, you don't have energy, you know? So it's like right. I wasn't doing anything besides just laying in bed, watching shows, watching Miss Risa Tisa, Miss Who the – Did I Marry? Oh. Now that was – now that was entertaining to say the that, bare minimum. Yes. And we're going to get into that. Um, sure. But it, I would say by day nine, I was eating stuff normally. Of course, with everyone, it varies, but – the the surgery itself i felt no pain afterwards i felt no pain it was just annoying not to be able to like eat a sub right you and your jersey like jersey mike, mike specifically yeah <laughs> literally i was about to say you and your jersey mike sub i know dude um but yeah that is that is about it for me so yeah okay so i was watching the who the freak did i marry and uh -huh. i was to the point where i was air playing it onto the tv through my phone like i was laid up in that bed with a 50 set of markers from amazon and a coloring book and a neck pillow with two ice packs squished in between my cheek and the neck pillow and just coloring my little life away listening to this woman's story her first-hand account of marrying a pathological liar, a 52-part series. That's freaking crazy. I hooked it up to my Apple CarPlay when I was in between accounts. And it was, like, I would put it on when I was cooking, making my coffee in the morning. At first, okay, so at first I did it when I was going to the gym. I told myself that I'm going to dedicate this to be my kind of like gym podcast or like playlist or whatever. I was like, because three videos and I've walked a mile and a half. You know what I mean? So I'm like, they're, they're 10 minutes long. That's three videos. That's 30 minutes because I do like a traditional, like a full length, like hour long workout. And then I like to do 30 minutes on the treadmill just to kind of like cool down and, you know, get some, get some cardio in. But <laughs> Literally, I so then I got to the point where I was like, you know what, like I, you know, I've just been so busy with work. I've, I haven't really been going to the gym as much. So um, I've, I've taken a little bit of a break just until I get into the groove of things. I've only been here for about three weeks now with my with my current position. So I'm just kind of like start trying to get back to the groove of things. So I yeah, so <laughs> I um, God, so I ended up just playing it when i'm just doing household stuff and it was for it by the way we're gonna do some spoilers because we're just gonna like talk about because her savannah and i both have watched the entire thing so if you haven't seen it and you want to see it or if you're in the middle of it then i would plug your ears or fast forward but miss risa tisa i love her so much all of the crap that she went through was freaking outrageous i could not I could not even imagine. And it all happened in such a short amount of time too. Like that is what's nuts to me is that it happened in like a year. All of that. Yeah. They were started in COVID. Yeah. They moved in at like what did, didn't she say like week two or something like that? Or like month one or month two. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, geez, girl. Mm hmm And it was also like the perfect, perfect scenario for like, not a shotgun wedding, but like a quick marriage move in type thing, because uh -huh. they started dating during the beginning of COVID. And then right when the shutdown happened, they were like, almost getting serious at that point like they had realized they really liked each other and he apparently lived like 45 minutes away and so they had the conversation of like okay well do we want to quarantine together like they're kind of being put in this situation of like are we serious about each other or not and she really liked this man and he apparently really liked her and so they did end up moving in together and i feel like i tr i'm like did was he just looking for someone to live with because we know now that he was lying about like having a house that was about to be his like he was in a studio but just waiting on his house like he wasn't he was waiting on a woman to move in right. with i oh, feel for like sure yeah absolutely 
I mean, because he really had nothing else going for him. He wasn't a VP, like he said. He was a literal forklift operator. And not to degrade or talk down on forklift operators, but this man was saying he was approved for a $750,000 mortgage from Chase Bank. That he could just pay for in cash? Uh Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. He only only wanted to buy a house in cash. Because of indoor (laughs) football. No, arena. Arena football. (laughs) Daggone it. Literally, I'm like... I'm still like, what even is that? Like, I don't think it's a thing anymore. I think it it's... used to be, but yeah, it's not. It's definitely not a thing anymore. I haven't heard anything about it in a very long time. So that that this whole thing is just absolutely insanity to me. Insane. Like that poor, poor, poor woman. Nothing about him was real. And you made a good point when we were talking. You were like, it was creepy. The the phone calls. Yes. Literally, he talked to himself for 30 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes every single morning, relaying messages back and forth, like, pretending he was on the phone with his brother, but it was literally just him, him holding the conversation for 30 minutes of him going, yeah, dude, yeah, brother, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I... I have faked a few phone calls in my day. I really have. Granted, just to get out of awkward situations. I feel like everybody has. But then as soon as I oh, get yeah. into the car or as soon as I get into my destination, phone's down. Right? Fine. Nobody is the wiser. But literally, I just like, I and it's, and it's painful in that 20 seconds that I do it. Not in the whole freaking 30 to 45 minutes of just him talking to himself that's nuts lied about his grandma dying she died back in 2008 and he's boohooing that she died of covid made up two siblings she had a freaking miscarriage dude she had a freaking miscarriage that shook me to my core but honestly and like yeah go ahead oh and he didn't come to the hospital for the miscarriage And had his assistant, quote unquote, talking to the doctors and the nurses, basically saying, like, I'm not going to be able to get there in time, blah, blah, blah. It was all a lie. He never had an assistant. So he just chose not to be there is what it comes down to. Nuts. He chose not to be there. And what got me was him peeing in the Powerade bottles. Oh, nasty man. That's what got me. When she saw the powery bottles everywhere and some of them were almost full to the like full of pee that is foul i'm like there had to have been because she was saying that he went from like a 3x all the way down to like a large extra large there had to have been some sort of like internal like molecular thing going like some sort of immune disease or something like that going on for him to lose all that weight and he's blaming his knee no ridiculous something something ain't right about that Uh, there's yeah there are very few things like it it would take a lot for me to not be able to make it to the bathroom and just resort to peeing in gatorade bottles and just setting them by my bed no that's absolutely foul that that is yeah like that is raised raised on a farm raised by wolves activity literally that would have been my final straw i think (laughs) that would have genuinely been if if anybody that i'm with at this point i would literally get on my hand like get on the ground and army crawl if i had to go to the bathroom (laughs) like i'm so serious like i would do anything in order to get to the bathroom that's crazy Ew. And Ew. it just, it's very interesting, though, because she explained kind of in the first video, she was like, I need y'all to understand, like, this man was not a compulsive liar. He wasn't lying to, like, get out of situations and get out of scenarios and to cover his tracks because he was cheating or doing drugs. Or th- He is a pathological liar. He's lying for absolutely no reason there's no rhyme or reason it's not helping him it's definitely like hurting her but it it wasn't hurting him to have just told the truth he just chose to make some something else up instead like 
it's such a crazy concept. And then now he's getting interviewed by this. I've only seen the one interview from this podcaster. And this guy was definitely not on the Legion is what his name is. He was not on Legion's side. He was really calling him on the BS. And right. um, it was just funny to watch Legion like in action lying. Like, just, you can tell he's, like, looking around, like, trying to put things together and just making it up on the spot, basically. Did you watch, like, because I know, because I found the interview on YouTube, and it's, like, two and a half hours. Did you watch that entire thing? I've just seen little clips around TikTok of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I'm, like, halfway tempted to watch the two and a half hours, but I got maybe ten minutes into it, and I was like, I can't do this anymore. Because I just like because because I feel like I, I feel like you just you, you just are like, you already know, you know what I mean? It's like and, you know, the fact that he just like straight up was like, oh, no, she's lying. She's lying. She's lying. It's like I fully believe her because of the fact that she went into so much detail about all of the things that happened, not only to her, but to her family, coworkers things of like the sheriff at that point things like that like there was just so much that went into it like it's just jeez dude i couldn't even imagine she also contacted his family and they all said don't believe a word that comes out of his mouth he's a liar so i'm like okay that's enough for me like if his family's backing it up and they are his blood and you're supposed to love and defend your family but they were all like um basically if he died we wouldn't care that's wild i mean yeah he needs help medically emotionally all of it all of it he i at the i think the last video that she posted she was saying that you know she's like i don't trust anybody and it breaks my heart when she posted that she was like i don't trust anyone and i'm like you know obviously it's been a couple of years and everybody like goes through their own trauma but that is something that you that she will never forget that is something that she will never forget and i really i really hope that she's like seeking therapy or something like i really hope she's you know talking to somebody about this yeah i i just i can't even begin to imagine like the rebuilding of her her like self-confidence everything that it's it's gonna take i know um speaking of trust we we got a lot of questions or i guess comments to maybe talk about love is blind but Brittany and i don't watch that show womp womp. <laughs> i'm for me it's an it's an i'm impatient type of thing like if i yep. do watch it i'm gonna start on episode five when we're all over the introductions and the get to know you type thing and we're down to the nitty-gritty of like who's ending up together who's not um but it's just not that type of like even the bachelor is not really my vibe um but everyone is talking about this poor girl who compared herself to megan fox now i feel like she set herself up truly um and i also just don't think love is blind to be completely honest i think love is unconditional love Mm -hmm. is not blind though i completely agree i because because you know sophia and i were talking the other day and it and it makes so much sense like the, the show is literally called love is blind verbatim love is blind and the only clips that i have seen are that is that girl claiming that she resembles megan fox i can see it from here up right nose up i can see it see it in the eyes but it's like the whole point of the show is to not talk about looks it's to get to know the person of and what's on the inside that matters like i mean granted so for instance if i was you know if i'm putting myself in in her shoes the only thing that uh, because a huge deal breaker for me is height i don't care if you are the nicest person in the world if you are if you are shorter than me it's not gonna work and that may sound you know that may sound superficial but it's like my i love my height but it's it's i don't want to say it's an insecurity of mine because it's definitely not i love that i'm tall but it's definitely something that i 
that I look for in somebody. My boyfriend is taller than me and I want, and I wanted somebody who was taller than me. So I think that would be one of my first questions is like, Hey, by the way, like I'm just a disclaimer, I'm tall and I wouldn't want to date anybody shorter than me. No offense. We could be homies, but like, that's just not my vibe. So like, that's really, that's really, you know, the only thing that I would do in, in, if I put myself in her shoes, but she literally told herself, like told this guy that she resembles Megan Fox. So of course him being a dude, he's going to immediately think I'm talking to Megan Fox. You're not brother. You are not talking to Megan Fox respectfully. You're not. So it's like, you know, it, it's just, that's just, that's she, my take. She set herself up, and I I think what annoyed me, too, is the way that she said it. She said something along the lines of, yeah, people have told me before that I look like that girl. I think she's married to, or maybe they're just dating, I don't know, but, like, dating MGK, Machine Gun Kelly. And you see on the show his head just perk up and he looks and his eyes go wide. He's like, uh, M- M- Megan Fox. She's like, yeah, yeah, Megan Fox. From then on, he's locked in. He oh, is sure. locked the fuck in. Because why yeah. wouldn't he be? Like, Megan Fox is one of the hottest women on the planet, drop dead Gorgina. And now in his brain, and not even his brain, because we guys, we know guys don't think with their brain or they heart. They, they think with them and all he can think about is like yeah (laughs) i'm talking to a supermodel like right like i'm talking to megan fox like that's that it's it so she said she that that made me so angry she's like yeah she's like married to machine gun like don't sit here and act like you don't know who megan fox is right and people have told you so you right so it's like if you if that was the first comparison why would you act so nonchalant about it? If that was the first comparison that, like, if it was some, like, obscure woman from history back in the 1600s, that's a completely different story. But we're talking about <laughs> Megan freaking Fox. Like, oh, like, what's that girl, Marie Antoinette, you know, whatever? Like, that's completely different. But we're talking about Megan Fox here. Like, she's been around for a hot minute, and she's going to be around for a hot minute. And yes. you can tell on his face when he first saw her, it was one of those, like, smiles with the wide eyes, you know, like, a, oh. oh, and they were hugging and she's like running towards him because she thinks he's like the most handsome thing in the world. And this girl is not ugly by any means, but she's not identical to Megan Fox. And that is unfortunately what he was expecting. Yep. And you could tell that he was just like oh no what have i done um Great. and then apparently she went on to be really annoying about stuff when they i guess the trip the show then sends them to a little vacation moment afterwards and they get to like spend a week together something like that she was annoying you saw a clip of it yeah she was like you literally <laughs> she's like holding a glass of wine you literally went out with your friends. You drink all the time. And he's like, you're literally drunk right now. <laughs> he's like, you're literally drunk right now. She's like, she's like, what do you mean? Like holding a glass of wine. He's like, but you're drunk. Like, hello. But yeah, it, it that's really all that I saw. And And then like the other clip that I saw is this couple like went to the altar and you know she said her vow she said her i do's and then he's like no nah, i don't oh yeah so yeah big that's yikes. painful incredibly that would that would have yeah humbled i feel like it is human it's very it's just human to have an immediate gut um feeling about how someone looks you know like you immediately know if you think they're hot or think they're cute or not Mm -hmm. so that is important so even if you have been talking to this man in these separated pods and you've heard his whole life story and you think he's like amazing and stuff you can't help if the first time you see him you're like oh he's not that cute right 
So you and then you then should not feel forced to make yourself think that he's cute. That is right. just a setup. It, For sure. It's not going to work. Attraction right. is key. The attraction is what 100% key. I will say that, you know, you could grow. Like if you could see yourself being attracted to this person, then you could, you know, work on it. But if it's one of those things that's like you're like you said, you mentioned the gut feeling of like Oh no, this person is not like I like. Oh, if your first gut reaction is to go, ooh, maybe listen to it, and then instead <laughs> of trying to like gaslight yourself and be like, maybe I could, maybe I could, but if you look at them, you'd be like, oh, well, you know, they're not ugly, you know what I mean? Like I could, and then just kind of like learn to grow from there. I feel like I feel like attraction is incredibly important, but I at the same time I do feel like that you can grow and you can grow into it as well yeah i agree um i dated a guy in high school who i don't think he was hot quote unquote by society's standards um but i fell in love with him because he was just like so funny and he was always the life of the party and something just like drew me to him like i thought he was Mm. cute and to me he was hot but i don't think to the world and he wasn't like a chiseled eight pack, like six foot five, perfectly coiffed hair, like super nice dresser. Like he was just a kid in high school and he was cute to me. And I, j- I loved him for that. And we, we dated and we, we, our relationship was like a little bit toxic. Like I can't even lie at some points. Um, but I don't. I don't know if I would have, like, picked him out of a lineup of, like, the world's top 20 hottest men just based on looks. But on personality, he was everything to me. So it has to be, like, that that perfect balance, you know. For sure. Like, you can't can't help what you're attracted to immediately. Like, I would be so... Right. Sorry, what? Like, my boyfriend, he is easily... In my eyes, he is the most handsome man in the world. Right. He is the most handsome man in the world. Like, I see him and I'm like, you're, like, I just want to, like, you are so, like, you, like, cute aggression. I'm like, you were so handsome. I just want to strangle you. But, like, but, you know, to other people, he may not be attractive to them. And that's okay. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I think that he is the hottest man on the face of the planet. But not everybody else is going to think so. And that's okay. Right. Right. Um, And I think for me, I would feel like I have an issue saying no or like hurting people's feelings. Mm. If I was on Love is Blind and the doors opened up and I was not attracted to that man, I would probably might go through with the marriage just because I don't want to hurt his feelings. (laughs) (laughs) Like I know myself. I I would just feel I would I maybe I wouldn't but I wouldn't want to hurt his feelings and I wouldn't I wouldn't want to do it on national television either like that oh my gosh I saw some like proposal fails like a Cody Co video on YouTube the other day and this guy proposed to this woman in front of an entire baseball stadium full of people and she said no she was like no, I don't, I don't want, no, I don't want to do this. I'm like, can you not say yes and then say no later? Save the man his dignity. That's how I roll. That's crazy. That sounds like my personal nightmare is to be in, like, is to get proposed to at, like, a baseball stadium or any sort of, like, sporting event. Or, like, a flash mob with a bunch of people or, like, in the middle of a restaurant or in the middle of a Mm. mall or something. That literally sounds like my own personal hell. I can't even imagine. I want my proposal to be small, intimate, and just me and my partner. That's it. And a a photographer, obviously. That's it. Even, like, and this might be a hot take. This might be a hot take, too. But uh, some proposals that I've seen, it's been private, a private moment between the two people. And then after that, they go off and their whole family and friends are sitting there waiting for like an after like, she said yes, woo. I don't want that. I'd be okay without that. I don't want that. No, ma'am. I 
would want maybe I would be open to the thought of a joint like a because you know because lately a lot of people have been doing kind of like joint bridal showers they've been doing like I don't know if they're calling it a couple showers like I don't I can't remember what they're calling it or like an engagement shower but a lot of people have been doing kind of like joint things so like the bride and the groom are involved or whoever is involved and it's and I, I do like that idea. So then you can celebrate with everybody's like family and friends and all that good stuff. It's not just stuff for the bride. It can be stuff for, you know, both people. So I, but I don't know. I just think that getting proposed to is such like an intimate thing. And it's such a, it's such a beautiful thing that I would just want to enjoy it with my partner and then go freak out about it with my friends and family afterwards. It's also another thing that you have to spend money on or other people have to spend money Mm -hmm. on. And weddings nowadays are so insanely expensive because we keep adding on all of these beforehand moments like the proposal party and then the bridal shower and then the bachelorette shower and then the rehearsal dinner. And it's like, oh, my God, I'm I'm, going to go broke like literally and obviously yeah. you're not paying for it because you don't know that it's happening so like maybe his family has paid for it but maybe your family's helping pay for it like that just ends up being a lot and yeah i think that i would like to just kind of soak it in yep. with my partner like for the whole night because i would just be like over the moon i would i wouldn't want to go entertain no no absolutely not i think i would want a bridal shower a bachelorette party and then just wedding or the and then rehearsal dinner obviously and then wedding like and even and and even bachelorette parties are getting freaking insane like i i remember i never went on this bachelorette trip because i ended up not getting my shift taken at work and now that i and now that i think back on it i wish that i would have just not shown up to work you know what I mean? Because it was I was bartending at the country club and they were taking advantage of me. Mm. And I had requested off for this bachelorette trip that I had already paid for my portion to go. And I didn't go. Because I had to work. They couldn't find anybody to take my shift. That's ridiculous. Did you get your money back or you were like, Absolute, keep it no, like my bad? No, they, they didn't even offer to give me my money back. I just told them oh. I... Oh, for yep i i should have asked but at the same time i just kind of like well what happened was i called the bride and i mean what's funny enough her and i aren't friends anymore but um i called the bride and i talked to her and i was like hey you know i just want to let you know that i'm so sorry you know like things got mixed up at work like my shifts can't be taken and if i don't show up they're gonna write me up and blah 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 in hindsight I should have just been like, that's that's your problem, not my problem kind of thing. You know what I mean? I should have just been like tough tushy and I'm, I'm a go. You know what I mean? I paid the couple hundred do- couple hundred dollars to go. Just gone down the drain. It was like 300 bucks. Dang. For, yeah. And they were going to Savannah, Georgia. So apparently it turned out to be an absolute S show. So... I'm kind of glad that oh. I, I'm, yeah, it ended up, apparently it, it just, it, the bride is a roamer when she drinks, so she'll drink a and then roamer? Just, she, yeah, she'll just drink <laughs> and disappear, like she'll roam. Okay. So, yeah, she'll just drink and disappear. So, apparently, like, just like a bunch of stuff happened, so I'm kind of glad that I didn't go, but, um, but yeah, so, but yeah, the, just bachelorette trips in general are just getting freaking crazy. What I want to do, I want to go to the beach for like a day or two. Just go and relax on the beach. I'm not, a, I don't really like going out. I don't really like staying out until two o'clock. I'm, I want to be in the bed by 11 p.m. I want to be comfy, cozy in some jammies, play some games, watch a movie, and then I'm going to sleep kind of vibe. But, yeah, I'm... I need more than a day or two. I need like at least three or four, but I am fine if we don't go to Miami and go out until 4 a.m. every single morning. Absolutely not. That's just not, that's not going to be my vibe. I also 
feel like there's a and I feel like we talked about this before there's pressure to like have the most insanely big wedding and invite everyone you know I want to spend all my money on the honeymoon like I Mm -hmm. want to go somewhere so magical so remote that they couldn't even reach me if I had won the lottery I, I just I want to be that off the grid I would love to go to Bora Bora after seeing all those videos of the tar trip, I would love to go see. I would love to go to Bora Bora. That'd not be on a tar trip. I mean, that'd be fun, but you know, just to like. Yeah, now that on, mm. I'm gonna say, mm, you know, don't get it twisted. <laughs> if Tar hit me up tomorrow and was like, "Hey, babe, we want to bring you to Bora Bora," I'm dropping everything and I'm going, hands yeah. down. I just mean I would love to go to somewhere remote like Bora Bora, or you know, somewhere just like. I would love like a private like a private little like cottage with like a private pool, private beach, private access to everything. I don't want to be around anybody else. Maybe to like go out to dinner, but after that, I don't want to be around anybody else. I want to just escape from reality for a week. I agree. I've seen a lot of like trash talk about the tart trip and I I kind of see both sides cuz it's like okay, these are crazy expensive and just like over the top trips for these influencers i do like however the past couple of trips they have definitely expanded their realm of influencers Mm -hmm. like it's not just like the top 10 girlies at the moment like they do bring creators that like I've never heard of before, but yeah. I think for the first few trips, it was like, okay, I know all those girls because they were that popular. Right. Um, they've definitely brought better, funnier people. They brought freaking Kaylee and Beth Ann that one year. I was oh, like, that's I'm genius. Absolutely. Yes. Ab- genius exactly. marketing. And a lot of people are like, why? This is ridiculous. Like, if you want to get me to hate this brand, then you're doing it. Like, you guys are spending, you know, millions on these trips. But then I got to thinking, I have never seen an influencer doing a tart ad. Like, I've seen influencers doing TikTok shop tart ads at their own free will. But Mm. I have never seen a what looks like a contracted tart brand deal. And Isabel, what is her last name? I don't know. Isabel on um, TikTok. I love this girl. She lives in New York. I love her so much. She made a video and was like, guys, they are getting so much free promo with these brand trips. That's why they don't need to do contracted brand deals because they bring these influencers with them and they basically do free ads for them for the entire trip because they're on the Tarte trip and they're going to do all of their regular content, but with Tarte sprinkled in there. So this is not just them like treating people. They are getting a lot out of this. Oh, for sure. It's just a different, it's just a different marketing scheme. Some girl was like throwing away all her Tarte shape tape concealer. I'm like, okay, well, you're literally just shooting yourself in the foot because that was good product and you already paid for it. (laughs) So $30, that's like 30 bucks a tube, babe. Like, you know what I mean? I, yeah. I definitely see, I, I definitely see both sides. Like I see the, I see the side of like the people, but then at the same time I saw this video, I can't remember the creator's name, but I like looked, I looked on her profile and she, and when I say only, I'm talking about like in comparison to like a bunch of like other influencers that went, she only had like 300 K followers on TikTok, And she was talking about how, you know, how loved she felt and how empowered she felt. And the fact that the Tarte CEO, what's her name? Like Maureen, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, Maureen and all the Tarte team, like, they felt, they made them feel so included, and they made them feel important, and, you know, she was like, what can I do to make you feel more supported? How can we help as, like, from, like, me personally and as a company, how can we help you? And, like, after watching that, I was like, you know, it's really just, like, a trip for the girls, you know what I mean? It's, like, a very, a very much, like, for the girls trip, and, And again, like, I mean, I like the point that you brought up and it's like not every influencer that went was some mega millionaire, mega millions of followers kind of influencer. They were, 
just like reg- I don't want to say regular Joe Schmo, but like you know, it was just like a a very broad. Like some of the people that were on there, I was like, I've never seen them before. I was like, but how awesome is that that they get the opportunity to go? Like that's so cool. And gr- I love Grace. Grace yes, I love her. She is so freaking funny. I just adore her. So when she said that she was going on the trip, I was like, I love that for her. Genuinely, and love I love that, that it's. It's not all makeup gurus. Like, mm-hmm. Grace isn't a makeup guru, but she still got invited. Um, right. Emily Kaiser, like, she... Uh, first off, this girl... Uh, Miss Emily... I don't even... She literally gets invited on every single branch of, like, what a freaking life to live. Like, I'm, I'm not even being jealous. Like, I'm so happy for her. But I'm also, like... I can't even imagine waking up in her shoes every single day just being like, okay, what's on, what's on the agenda? Like, is it Australia today? Is it Miami? Like, because she's so big that everyone wants her on all of her trips, which is understandable. (laughs) Like, what a life, honestly. Like, how, how? Teach me your ways. I, honestly, I, I... (laughs) I barely watched any video of the tart trip because I have such bad FOMO. <laughs> I scrolled every tart video. I scrolled past. Every you gotta protect them. your piece. I, I gotta protect the piece. You know what I mean? I'm like, it's it's 45 degrees and it's cold and raining. And I see like, get ready with me to go to board. I'm like, scroll. I'm like, you know what I mean? Because I'm like, I'm. it's cold and raining and I... My, the bottom of my jeans are wet like I don't want to I, I I don't want to speak you know what I mean so again no hate to them but it was just I gotta protect my peace and I have such bad FOMO that I just had to keep scrolling I had to I, I think I maybe watched like two total you gotta do what you gotta do there I have a, I have phases with certain influencers especially on YouTube that like when I'm not happy with life I don't watch them because I'm like I love you so much but you're just gonna make me sad literally <laughs> <laughs> honestly though support from afar but i can't watch your life right now i can't because i'm really sad about mine i just can't that's so funny valid though honestly like that's when i just yeah i just like erase myself from reality and i'm like i can't do this right now that's so and that's funny. like totally fine you shouldn't feel shouldn't feel forced to watch stuff and also again just like protecting your own peace like what's is this uh, uh, not to be dramatic but like is this a trigger for you like is this going to make you depressed are you going right. to overthink for five hours after this are you going to be anxiety ridden about your life plan for three days now like right i don't have time for that uh-uh you gotta set boundaries with yourself at this point know your 100%. limits I, I got tagged in a video the other day that was like um this girl was just saying i'm so sick of the influencers who are just over the top designer this designer that driving range rovers and going to bora bora every other day she's like can y'all just tag some normal regular joe schmo tiktokers who just like aren't anything amazing but they're also like kind of fun to watch but they don't have a gucci purse (laughs) someone tagged me and i was like yeah okay i take that like uh, put me in that category i'm fine with that like i'm not living above my means i'm not living below i treat myself but i don't feel like i'm one of those people where i'm like i'm gonna make you feel like you're poor and below me right right i love that I love that. I mean, I feel like you're the same way, too. Like, we, we're we're not, like, super gaudy and, you know, like, dripped in designer. No. I, I thought about, (laughs) I thought about buying a Louis bag once. (gasps) Once? Don't give me that. Once. There was one, there was a purse, like, I think, I think, I saw it, it was years ago. Michaela. Tat Michaela, she um <laughs> didn't get it in didn't get it nice and sharp. <laughs> <laughs> she posted this purse and it was a Louis purse and it was be so beautiful that it like literally made like it, I it took my breath away. 
it, it was one of those like oh if i were to buy a designer purse it would be that purse like it was just i was just shook to my core i looked it up and i immediately said dream gone and just shut my laptop i said no thanks <laughs> no thank you it was like six thousand dollars i was like i'm yeah i mean granted it was like a bigger purse so like but it was like i think it was like a summer collection from a couple years ago and it was just this like it was this beautiful like bubblegum pink and then like like a like a sunshine yellow ombre and it had like a cute little strawberry and lemon little like keychain on it like it was so it was so cutesy like it was so it was so bright and vibrant and colorful that it was just like it screamed me and i was like i want that purse so bad and i don't normally comment on giveaway posts but she was doing a giveaway and that purse was included <gasps> and you bet i commented spam commented being like oh my god i would die if i got that purse obviously didn't win it it's been three or four years but <laughs> I was like, I, 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 I'm going to try and find a picture and send it to you because maybe it'll be on Poshmark or something at some point in time. But like I, when I saw that purse, my jaw was on the floor. It was gorgeous. That is the one and only time that I've ever thought about buying a designer bag. I'm so interested to see it. I also feel like you could probably find it on DHgate. Oh, probably. Hold on. I want to see. I want to find a picture of it. And like I wouldn't blame you if and you bought it. The, I and show on the pod. I have um bought one thing from DH Gate. I bought a okay. pair of Gucci clogs, but they're like a like a rubbery consistency. I remember and, those. And mm-hmm. I almost don't even like to talk about it. Um, I waited about two weeks to get them from China, and I did a cutie unpackaging video. Got my little scissors, snipped open the package, and um, cut right through the clogs. Cut Ooh. right through them. Not cut through like the butter. Clogs. Yep. Dark and they were ruined. Like I, I will be honest. I ended up throwing them in the trash because people were like, "Oh, just glue back together like the rubber." I'm like, like, it was at the the part that goes over the top of your foot. It was right on the center bit so Lovely. since they're backless i'm like walking and all the pressure is going to be going on the top right. of my foot so like glue ain't gonna do it <laughs> it's girl. gonna bust it's, it's, it's gonna, gonna pop gonna, right back open <laughs> it's gonna come apart all right i found yep. it i found it honestly now that i'm looking at it it's cute but i'm kind of glad i didn't buy it <laughs> Yeah, like it's definitely it's definitely cutesy, and I do, and I did really love it at the time. Oh God! <gasps> oh, that's so I love that ombre. Isn't that adorable? Yeah, it's like it is like pink. strawberry lemonade. Yeah, it's like the pink, and then it goes into the yellow ombre. And I saw it. Michaela was doing a giveaway of it, and I was like, I want it. I wanted it so bad. But it was so expensive. And now they're selling it mm. on some like re this website was called Rebag and they're selling it for twenty six hundred dollars. Oh, so it's more affordable is what I'm no, hearing. Ma'am. No ma'am. <laughs> See, I will talk myself into going out to eat. That's something that's a non negotiable. Like if I even my fridge is full of groceries, I'm gonna go through. I'm I'm gonna go out to eat. But that is so much money for a purse. The most the most designer thing that I own is Kate Spade and and what else kate spade and like coach i think that's about as designer as i get with purses love me a good kate spade purse oh my gosh i love everything kate spade truly mm -hmm. i feel like her stuff never is cheese ball like even mm -hmm. her um like kind of boutique pieces that are like little bags that are the shape of a golf ball or like the shape so of a watermelon cute. slice like they're still cute they are never cheese ball i love I love it, it. Um, but I also at the same time, I'm like, if I, if I had Alex Earl money, like I would be buying designer bags. Like I would be buying every pair of shoes that I've ever dreamed of. And then I'd buy a pair for my friends. Like, so I can't even hate when people get famous. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> you, that's why I was like, 
I was like, I can't even, it's like, (laughs) when people have that kind of money, like, I I don't understand how people, oh my gosh, you've changed, like, you have all these bags, and it's not the other, I'm like, okay, but they also have all the money, so if that's their dream, and that's what they want to spend it on, don't hate on them. Right. I I mean, don't go broke over it, but, like, you have to assume they're being smart with their money, like, you, you don't know the, the insides and the outsides, but... If you have millions of dollars and you want designer bags, that's what you can that's what Literally, you can do with your life at that point. Do it. Like the I think uh, cuz a lot of people lately are just kind of craving relatability and you know, they are it's almost like it's almost like they want to see somebody else be in the same position they are. So like they're struggling so they want it, it's almost like they want to see somebody else struggle so they're not alone so that's why a lot of these big mega influencers a lot of people are like you either love them or you hate them you know what i mean it's like you have those people that are from there from the beginning they're ride or dies they're like oh my goodness like the first person that i thought of was monet yeah that's the first person i thought of because she is a nurse or used to be a nurse and that's when she started her TikTok thing was when she was in nursing school. And now she's obviously out of nursing school, but she's in a incredible relationship. She's traveling the world. She's healthy. She's happy. And people are like, she's not relatable anymore. So I don't want to watch her. I'm like, but you say anymore. So that means that you have watched her from the beginning, but you, you're not excited for her, um, for her successes you're not happy for her successes because they're like oh she's not relatable anymore so we don't want to watch her anymore like that 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 in itself like when when you really think about it it like kind of doesn't make any sense to me but um, you know if you want to follow people who are more relatable and put more relatable content out there and have set like strict boundaries with what content they want to put out there by all means, I love that. But I also kind of really like following the influencers, like the mega, or like at least watching their videos. Like Alex Earl, I will never have Alex Earl money. I will never have the clout that she has. But I kind of love watching her stuff because I'm like, I could never do what she does. Never. Like, she is never home. She travels from, she's bouncing from one place, then flying to another place and flying to another place, flying to another place. And she's like, yeah, I've been home for the first time in two months. I'm like, if I'm not home for more than two days, I start to sweat. Like, I love the, I love being in the comfort of my own home. (laughs) Yeah. I think you brought up a great point about this, like, need for relatability. Um, Because I, you all but you always have to think like if you were in monet's position would you be turning down these opportunities absolutely not like i'm like come on like sorry i can't do this my followers say i'm not relatable so i can't go on this trip i'm sorry and (laughs) y'all got her there like we as followers got her there so now you're mad that she's benefiting from it and that she has skyrocketed to this position of like fame and fortune or whatever like she didn't do it by just walking around the street and then just someone decided to give her this money like we did that exactly (laughs) like like, exactly it's freaking crazy it's yeah because it's it's that same thing like you would do it too for a check like you would do it too for sure i have i have been literally i've been having people report every video of mine (laughs) somebody's been reporting my videos saying that they are ads that i'm not disclosing it's like every video i'm like i'm sitting here talking about oh i'm just made my coffee in the morning this is branded content Where's the brand? Where's the brand at? I I wouldn't even know how to do that if there was a gun to my head. Like, how do people have the time to sit there? And it's like, how can I, how can I just like ruin their day a little bit today? I just, I can't imagine being that bitter. I cannot imagine being that bitter. No. 
I get that as well too. And it, it just, I don't think maybe as much as you, like you said, it seems like every single video you're getting some sort of, yes. And also that can count against you, which is like, okay, don't F with my money. Don't F right. with my job. Don't F right. with my side hustle. Like don't do that because TikTok is so stupid about these strikes on your account and stuff. I know. Even, even if they take one of your videos down or they remove one of your comments and then you appeal it and it gets put back up because it was found that there's nothing wrong with it, you still get a strike on your account. They don't yep. remove it. That makes, that no makes sense. sense. Yeah, literally uh, make that make yeah, make that make sense. It does it does not make any freaking sense whatsoever. It is so freaking frustrating. So frustrating. So, yeah, I mean, so far, I mean, really the only thing is, like, I mean, obviously you've seen it. So, like, what what will happen is somebody will report a video saying, like, oh, this is branded content, but they're not disclosing that it's an ad. So then they go and report it. So then I get a notification saying, like, and it basically TikTok, like, gives you an opportunity to say, like, to almost kind of fess up. Almost like you got caught being like, hey, is this branded content? Like, just just tell us the truth. And I'm like no i'm literally just talking about my coffee that i'm making in the morning no this is not branded content i just happened to mention that the mug that i'm using this is not branded content i'm just making conversation so i haven't gotten it in a few days but it's been it's been frustrating to say the least yeah some people have nothing else to do i guess i know it is what it comes down to um, well, I'll let you get to bed. I'm about to go inhale this Chipotle burrito that I Ooh, got before. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, I got a bowl and then I do like the little trick where you get the tortilla Ooh, on the side. Nice. Yeah. So I went ahead and like made it before we started recording so I can go downstairs Ooh. and mm -hmm, take a nice, nice chomp. Amazing. I might eat some chips, maybe like a little chippy or two. Yeah. A little I something salty. A little something salty before I go to bed. Um, we love you guys so much. Thanks for listening to another episode. We hope you enjoyed and we hope you follow us on our Instagram so you can get more um, info on what we're doing and when we drop a new episode just to keep up with us a little better. Love y'all so much. Much love, peace and blessings. Good night, everybody.